Hello and welcome. So in this video, we're going to look at what has changed, if anything at all, with Alienware Command Center for 2024. With the new iteration here of the Alienware M16R2 that's newly designed for 2024, we also want to see what Alienware has done on the software side of things. In last year's Alienware Command Center, which was already much improved over the previous iterations, we had a lot more capability on our hands. Now with this generation, we've also got the Alienware Command Center, we've got a new redesign for this laptop, a new thermal system, as well as Meteor Lake CPUs, the Intel's 14th generation for laptops that you know is focusing on AI. So we're gonna look at this and see what kind of control and capability we get with Alienware Command Center, what's changed, if anything, what's new, and how the performance changes, particularly if we use some of the options to uh, control the TCC for the CPU and try to limit the heat generated that's from that's output from this device. As we know, Alienware has a tendency to run hot and loud, so we're going to look at what we can do to tame this beast, but also look at what is the resulting performance that we get after tuning things through Alienware Command Center. So let's jump right in. We'll start to look at with Alienware Command Center first. We'll look at what the options are. We'll talk about some of the modes, and we'll talk about what's new and how you can use the, the Alienware Command Center tools to tune your device for gaming. And also before we jump right in, please click on the subscribe button to get subscribed to this channel, hit that notification bell so that you're the first to know when there's new content available here. Let's jump in. So here we are at the desktop on the Alienware M16R2. The first thing we'll do here is to launch Alienware Command Center. So I've got it uh, down on the taskbar here. So the first thing we'll notice is that there has been a significant improvement to the loading times and to the overall stability of launching this application. I've seen far fewer crashes and far fewer loading issues than I did the prior year when this version of the Alienware Command Center was first introduced. So thank you Dell for making much, much improvements in that particular area. In this video, we'll focus here on the performance tab there's of course other aspects of the Alienware Command Center that haven't really changed. Uh, what I'm going to do here is to point out what has, you know, what is available in terms of overclocking and tuning performance, particularly with the performance modes for this Alienware M16R2. So first, let's look at the available modes here. Just as last year, we've still got six available modes, which I think is far too many. Would love to see Alienware reduce that down to just three. There can be a predefined balance mode, a performance mode where we get, you know, max CPU and GPU performance performance and then give us a custom mode that allows us to have full control over the CPU, the GPU, including undervolting, overclocking and thermals in terms of the fan speeds here. So we'll look at what Alienware has to offer. First mode we've got here is battery. So this is, if we see here, we hover over this, we also get a little bit of a tooltip. Express charge here is meant for prolonging your battery life if you often run your laptop in AC powered mode. If we go over to uh, the next one here, we've got quiet. So this focuses on being in an office environment and you wanna have absolutely no noise from this laptop, which means the uh, power budgets will be tuned down quite a bit to ensure that the CPU and GPU stay quiet. Of course, you'll get at lower clock speeds on both the CPU and of course the GPU as well. Should not be using this mode for gaming. As we move along, we've got a balance mode here. So this is for optimized system performance as it states, but this mode you can game in quite a few number of games. If you don't have a lot of GPU head, uh, requirements, you can actually get some gaming done in this mode. Of course, notice you'll get a significant drop in FPS performance because the budgets, power budgets are quite constrained, but you will get a nice balance between performance and of course, between the thermals and the fan noise from this mode if you so choose. Finally, the mode that you should be using for most of your gameplay is the performance mode. This one is defined as having overclocked graphics and we've got performance optimized here. That means you're gonna get higher clocks on your CPU and of course, you know, maximum clocks on your GPU with that slight overclock we'll look at in just a moment. As we move along, we've got an overdrive mode. So this just cranks things up a little bit further by pushing CPU and GPU as far as it can go using the maximum fan speed so you can get maximum performance with some additional thermal headroom. Keep in mind, as you can, I'm sure, probably hear the fans ramp up. This, this mode gets quite loud and quite noisy. If you're not gonna be in a place where people will, will you know, mind it, then that's fine. But in any other environment, you should be very hesitant to use this mode. If you have a game that requires both CPU and GPU horsepower and quite a bit of it, this may help you eke out another few frames per second, but in my opinion, it isn't worth the actual noise that you're gonna get from this device. It does run cooler, 
but the noise level is quite significant. And finally, we've got a custom mode here. So thank you, Dell, for giving us a custom mode. We had this last year with the Alienware Command Center for 2023. However, there's still limitations in this mode as we do not have the ability to undervolt the CPUs. In the last year, I looked at the Alienware M18 R1. That one did have an unlocked CPU from Intel, the, the 13900HX. However, even there, we did not have any ability to undervolt the CPU from the Alienware Command Center. And it's a similar story this time. However, this year, we've got the Intel 14th Lake, the Meteor Lake generation of CPUs, which are heavily AI focused uh, and supposed to be mobile only. With that said, the, this device is running the 14900HX. However, it's not able to be underclocked here because those are locked CPUs. So that said, we have no ability here to do anything with the CPU. It is running the RTX 4070 with the M16 R2 redesign. Dell has decided to limit the Alienware M16 R2 to 4070 at the top end of the GPU stack. That said, with the RTX 4070 on board, we've got here an advanced view, and you'd want to head over to this if you want to look at over, over, uh, overclocking your GPU or adjusting the thermals. There are by default two different presets. For example, if we look at preset one here, we get a modest 25 megahertz boost and a 50 megahertz boost to the core and the memory clocks. The second profile allows us to get 50 and 100 megahertz to those boost clocks. And finally, we have a manual mode where we have full control over tuning and you can tune to your heart's desire. So that is appreciated. Thank you for that, Dell. However, keep in mind, and this is an annoyance more than you know a fault or anything. If you're in this mode, you have to either hit test and save or cancel out for you to be able to switch into any of the modes or go into any of the other functions within Alienware. So that is nice to see, but it is a little bit of an annoyance, particularly if you want to find where the fans are. So if we hit cancel here, we can go back to the overview tab. If you stay in the advanced tab, you cannot switch different modes. So you have to switch over to the GPU overview tab. And at the bottom here, you'll see a small little toggle between performance and thermal. So this is where you want to go if you want to adjust fan speeds. Now notice here, once we toggle this over to thermal, we get a completely different view. And in this view, we are able to control both the CPU fans as well as the GPU fans. And we'll demonstrate that here. If we toggle the advanced view for the CPU fan and also the advanced view for the GPU fan, we have a, a not a significant, but a good amount of control, I would say, for overclocking and for enthusiasts. So by default, the fan speeds are set to on auto managed, even in custom mode, which I think is fine for most people. But we do also have an offset ability where we can choose to ramp them up to 100% or choose some offset in between. And having it granular like this is actually very nice. Thank you for that. Dell, if you want to really tune everything to your heart's content, this you know, capability is there. And you can you know, individually choose to adjust the GPU fan as well as the CPU fan speeds. You can also play with the curves here if you so desire. And finally here, the only thing we have in terms of undervolting the CPU is this TCC headroom. So what this does is allows you to set the maximum offset that you want for the GPU or the, excuse me, the CPU from running below its top third thermal max. Now for the Meteor Lake CPUs, this is going to be surprising to a lot of different people, but that CPU is rated all the way up to 110 uh, degrees Celsius. That means if you crank this up, uh, excuse me, if you crank this down to zero, you're going to get a maximum of 110 degrees Celsius. I know a lot of you complain they're uncomfortable with even 100 degrees Celsius on your CPUs. So this is going to shock a lot of people, I'm assuming. But that said, you can play with this offset and crank it down to 85 or 90 or 95 in between. Uh, my experience with this has been that you get some stuttery gameplay. If you crank this all the way to 85 and the clock speeds really drop down to around 2.5 gigahertz, the Meteor Lake C CPU struggles to even hit 3 gigahertz in games such as Red Dead Redemption 2, Borderlands 3, or even Cyberpunk 2077, despite being rated for 5 gigahertz or nearly 5 gigahertz on the top end of the boost clocks. So that is something to keep in mind. You can adjust these here to your heart's content, come back, tune these and test in your games and to make sure that you get a stable environment. Of course, you can play with the fan speeds as well. But again, you cannot toggle out of anything here until you hit cancel or accept on these things. And then you're able to go back to the, the main tabs. Then you can finally toggle back to the thermal modes. Now, Keep in mind, I have experienced some issues where if you're in a particular mode, you all tab out from the game and try to switch into one of these modes, particularly custom mode, it is unavailable.
You're able to toggle between balance, performance, overdrive, etc. But custom mode seems to become unavailable when you're in a game. And in my experience has been that custom mode with all the tweaking to the advanced you know, views in the, in the GPU, the overclocks, as well as the TCC offset for the CPU, you start to get some unstable results, particularly with the Meteor Lake CPU. So I don't know if this is going to be something that continues. I'll be keeping an eye on this throughout the year so I can keep you updated. But that has been my experience thus far. So that's all there is really to say about the, this, this panel here of performance mode in the Alienware Command Center. Overall, we've got a very similar layout to what we saw last year. We still do not have any real ability to undervolt the CPU, and uh, that's all there is to it. You can still adjust the, the GPU, and you have control over the fan speeds. So thank you for that, Dell, but I believe there's still a lot more room to be uh, improved here, and particularly with the amount of modes, we can cut them down. Why can we not just have one optimized mode, which allows you to get a good balance between power, uh, performance, as well as prolonged battery life, a performance mode, which is all guns blazing, and then finally a custom mode where you could tweak, tweak to your heart's content. With the Lenovo devices, and last year I saw the Lenovo AI engine making its way into more and more devices this year as well, that I believe is the path forward, which is AI tuned graphics and CPU performance balance, as well as thermals and fan noise and everything taken into account, but that requires additional sensors, additional software. So I do understand, but I believe that's where we're gonna be heading down the road. That's all really there is to show you here. Of course, if we look at the Alienware Command Center, we still have our dashboard very similar to what we saw last year with the 2023 series of Alienware devices. Uh, we have the performance modes here that we've looked at. We've got Alienware FX, which is still the lighting, very similar to what we had last year. And this is not quite as customizable as what we've seen with other manufacturers. So I'd love for you know Alienware to really put their heart into this. You have a library here where you can go in and define game specific presets. For example, if I want Power World to run uh, in a balanced mode because it simply doesn't need all that GPU headroom, I can go in here and do that, save my preset, and it will remember that the last time, uh, the next time I launch this game. Allows you to have a little bit of variability between how you run your games other than just all fans and guns blazing in overdrive mode. Uh, and that said, we have finally here at the last, I don't want to click on this, it's still be Atmos, but this will allow you to have an additional applet which you can install from the Microsoft Store for free. The license is included with the purchase of this device that allows you to tune your sound output to your heart's content. So that's all there is really to say here. I believe the Alienware Command Center is looking very similar to what we saw in 2023. The Meteor Lake CPUs are not overclockable to no surprise, but keep in mind this year with the 14th generation, there's gonna be a mix of Meteor Lake CPUs, which are not overclockable and not unlocked, and Raptor Lake 14900, 14700HX CPUs, which are overclockable. So you'll have to keep that in mind as you look at the device itself. Now, I'm just going to go in here to the system and show you the CPU that's on offer here. Here we've got a Core Ultra 7 155H. This is the new Meteor Lake CPUs that basically run at very, very low base clocks. I was actually surprised the first time I saw this, only 1.40 gigahertz. Of course, they can turbo all the way up to some crazy number, which they never hit, by the way, not in this chassis uh, from what I've seen. So we'll have to wait and see what is the judge on the Meteor Lake CPUs, whether that's worth buying or you should stick to the Raptor Lake 14900 and 14700 HX series if you want that performance for gaming and all out a performance for all your other CPU heavy workloads. So that's all we really have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. And if you like the video, please share across your social media channels. Get subscribed to this channel. There'll be lots of co coverage coming up on the Alienware M16 R2 in the coming days and weeks. So get tuned for that and we'll see you in the next video.